Hi guys, welcome back again to a new tutorial. Um, it's been a while, well, two weeks. Um, I am promised to paint a big painting for you. So today we're gonna to paint a big painting, okay? Lots of color, lots of detail, and um, it's a painting of Black Rock Castle in Cork. Very well known uh, castle. It's actually, it's actually an, an observatory now at the moment. It's been that for a long time. Um, it's a beautiful, spot if you are ever in cork visit black rock castle i promise you you won't be disappointed okay but today we're going to be painting that um it's nice a, a nice big painting lots of color as i said lots of detail so it could take two maybe three uh different videos to complete this okay um but bear with me we'll have a bit of fun with it we're going to be changing things around slightly and um by that i mean colors so i'm just going to show you what i have here now okay how i'm set up all right and I'll take my time and explain everything to you in detail, as best I can. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, I have a seven, at the zoom right back, I'll not fit this in, 700 by 500 millimeter stretched canvas. Okay, now I made a quick sketch of the castle, as you can see, and it's on the side of the, um, the river here, the River Lee, and I've primed this canvas three times. I gave it three coats of primer, okay? It's my own homemade primer, and it makes the canvas lovely and smooth to work on, okay? So it's more of a fine grain canvas then, rather than a coarse grain, okay? Because it's very difficult to find really fine grain canvases. Um, most of the canvases would be the standard sort of a medium, uh, medium kind of a grain. All right, so I give it two or three coats of primer just for this painting here because I want to paint the, f the smooth to flow nice and smoothly over the canvas. Okay, now um, I didn't go into any great detail, it's just a rough sketch. I fill the details in with the brush as I'm going, okay? It's just a broad, uh, a broad sketch of the scene. Now, looking down here, look, there's the photograph I'm going to be painting, okay? I, the, now there's a terrible reflection on the tablet I know but this is um, what I'm going to be painting from so you can see it's the lovely castle by the river uh, there are some factories over in the distance we'll get those in there's a lovely kind of a little rocky area um, just in the foreground here so there's going to be a nice bit of work in this now I'm going to be changing colours okay I'm not going to be following the colours on this because I want to make this nice and um, bright and colourful and I want to show loads of, lots of complementary colours as well. So let's have a look you know, guys, at what I have. This is my, tab my, my palette, okay? Standard wooden palette. Um, it's only a small palette. It's not very big, you can see. It's only a small palette. Um, I have this now many, many, many years and this is probably the only one I use. I have a bigger one as well, um, but I don't like using the bigger one because it's just kind of big and awkward. Uh, this can be kind of held nicely in the hand. Um, you know, it's a nice, small, versatile palette. So um, you can use a paper tearaway palette if you like, which there is one just there. I don't know if you can see it now or not. That's a paper tearaway palette. You just tear it off when you're finished, throw it in the bin, and there's a new, fresh, clean one underneath. Um, I use that for teaching people so that, you know, it saves me cleaning afterwards. Just tear it off, chuck it in the bin, and I have a new fresh one underneath. All right. Um, now, actually, there's another castle I just finished. That's Ross Castle in County Kerry. Now, the reason I'm showing you this one is because I'm going to use similar colours to this on that, okay? That's very sort of... There's lots of blues and light greys and whites in this, so it's very sort of bland for me. I would like to add a bit more colour, so I'm going to follow colours similar to this, okay? You can see there's a nice sort of a, a yellow and a bit of pink in there um some nice shadow blue purpley shadow colors so i'm going to be kind of taking a bit of color from this scene and applying it to my painting okay that's ross castle in county Kerry. you have to visit it's absolutely gorgeous down there um so and maybe similar to the sky i might take a bit of the sky as well but i'm going to be putting some warmer colors in there all mm -hmm. right so this is what I just finished. That's only um, 16 by 10. So a nice small painting, handmade frame. Looks quite well, doesn't it? So now, down here I have two jars of brushes, okay? I have 
my, I have a couple of bristles here, which I might use for some tick paint, to apply some tick paint later. But a lot of my brushes are just these synthetic brushes, all right? Gold handled synthetic brushes. Nice, cheap and cheerful. Um, nothing fancy down here. I have one here, this is a kind of a good one. Dial Aroni, this is a more of an acrylic brush, but it's nice and soft. It's synthetic, I love using these for oils. Okay, it's nice soft colors. Um, speaking of colors, I'll tell you what I have in my palette here. Um, now, I'm going to be putting some magenta on here. It's a lovely pink. Lovely for clothes and um, sunsets. So we're going to have some magenta, some lamp black, some um, phthalo blue. I might put some cobalt blue on there as well. Uh, I'd probably, I might just use the phthalo blue. Um, cadmium red. We have some burnt cyanide. Some burnt umber, which is gone. I can put more on there now. Uh, burnt cyanide, burnt umber, cadmium yellow pale. This is a kind of a nice all around yellow now. You can get a lemon yellow, which is very, very lemony. This is a kind of a nice warm, rich yellow, all right. I have some Naples yellow, which I always use. That's a lovely pastel kind of a colour. And I'm going to be putting some titanium white on there as well. So there are a few colours, not too many, nice and simple. But we can do a lot of mixing with these colours and get an awful lot of different shades, hues and tones with these colours. Okay. Um, also, some turpentine, a little drop of linseed oil in there, some tissue. Um, and a cup of tea. Lovely cup of tea is a must before any painting. Um, and that's it guys. So, here we go. Nice big painting for you this week. I hope you enjoy. Um, I'm going to be getting another one in after this. Uh, I promised a lady, I promised one of you guys, um, I'd paint a picture of the Gulf Coast. So, I have one in mind. I might get that one after this and upload it. So, um, I, hope you, I hope you enjoy the painting this week. I'm looking forward to it. And this painting is going to be on exhibit um, for a local charity very, very soon. Mm. It's a charity um, which is run locally, where I'm from here, and it's um, called Anita's Orphanage. Um, they do huge work and they raise money every year uh, for Cambodia. And um, I'm going to be displaying this piece there for charity. So most of what I get for this will go to the charity, okay? So, um, I'm going to be taking my time with this and doing it nice, all right? Um, they're fantastic. They run it every year. They hang on lots of work from all different artists all around the, uh, the bar. And um, there's some fantastic work there every year. And they always raise a lot of money. So, um, fair play to them for doing that. So, this is just a shout out to you guys, if you're watching. So, um... Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy. So I'm just going to set the camera up here on the stand and we'll crack on. Okay, so enjoy, let's. Okay, guys, here we go. Um, I'm going to take my green. Now, I don't know if you can. It's a pity now I can't show you the palette because this is such a big painting that it kind of takes over the entire camera. All right. Um, I'll hold the palette up just a little bit so I can show you my mixing as I'm going, alright, just, just every now and again, just to give you an idea of the, uh, the types of mixing that I'm doing, alright, now I'm just going to stick some of my paint on here, I should have done this earlier, but, uh, oh, look, it's not uh, the end of the world, is it, right, I think we're good to go, now I'm just going to take my big green brush, alright, dip it into my tops, dab it on the tissue and I'm going to paint a very light blue now across the sky all right very very light blue so I'm going to take some uh, let's try some cobalt okay we'll start with some cobalt and some titanium white and let's make a nice light blue now for this and um, I'm being careful because do you know what I should have cleaned my palette properly because I was painting yesterday and there's still some damp paint on my palette here and there so I need to be careful just just for this part here anyway so some cobalt blue and some white and let's paint a nice light blue sky across here now I'm going to just paint through 
the pentalines, okay? Because I could probably see them again through the paint later. So I'm not too worried. Not too worried. Um, now, let's just fill in a nice light blue. Now, this is quite wet, okay? I have lots of tops in this. Um, when I'm painting skies like this, I will kind of start off quite wet just to get the canvas covered and then I will build thicker layers on top of that afterwards all right just to let you know it looks very wet almost like watercolor here now but I will be thickening it up as I go so don't worry um, this is just how I paint a lot of people don't kind of work like this they just put on very thick paint at the beginning um, that for me is very laborious and time consuming I like to get these things done quickly uh, not too quickly but I like to you know crack on with something that's just the way that I've always been and um, I don't know actually is it because when I was painting with acrylics many years ago I always found myself rushing to get a, to get a, a sky done quick before I started drying you see so it kind of stuck with me then I was always kind of painting fast I found um, I don't know why I know I should kind of calm down a little bit and uh, I will eventually but I just like getting things done that's just the way I am now walking away very very slowly along the sky and let's make it a little richer up on top just a little bit no, I'm not bringing this blue all the way right down to the bottom, okay? Not to the horizon line, anyhow. We have little trees off in the distance over here, a little hill. But I want to... I want to add a touch of kind of a pinky orange just at the very end of the sky over there. So I'm not putting very dark blue too far down, okay? And I'll show you in a minute why that is. Now, going across the sky nice and slowly and just lighten it just along here so this is what I do now when I'm painting the sky okay I just kind of add to it as I'm going all the time if I don't like the look of something I just add a little bit to it um, or change it or remove some of it you know I just kind of change as I'm going along so you can see how wet that is now it's actually kind of dripping down there slowly so it is quite wet and just put some white into that get rid of that spill and I hope you're following these tutorials guys to, I'm keeping them as simple as possible for you to understand um, but I'm kind of trying to vary my tutorials as well in that I want to kind of show you a bit of everything each time and I want to show you something new each time as well so this week now is focusing I suppose on a castle a nice castle and um, you know there's not going to be a huge amount of detail in it I'm not going to be painting every single brick individually you know like a lot of artists might do I just want to catch catch the moment you know when I want to catch the moment in time I want to um, I want to achieve the, the feeling of the the scene um, you know I'm not going to be trying to get every single detail into the, the castle because number one it's impossible and number two I get quite bored when I have to paint every single little brick and every crack in a painting so that's not the type of painting I do I'm more of an impressionist a landscape impressionist um, I know there are a lot of guys on YouTube who will do landscapes and they will paint every single last little detail and they'll paint every leaf individually and that's that's fantastic that's great some of the work is absolutely phenomenal um, but I kind of I tend to get quite bored after a while so I I like to kind of work loosely that's what I'll say I like to work nice and loose have a bit of fun with it um, and I think it shows as well in the painting. When you look at it, when you look back at the painting, and you can you can see you can tell by a painting that someone really enjoyed painting it. 
Now, I'm just going to lighten this away down here. All right, and I can see it kind of, the haze is going on it up on top a little bit. It's starting to dry very, very slightly. Now I'm just taking a tiny touch of Taylor Blue, okay? I just want to warm this up slightly. Now it's quite pale, so I'm just going to darken it very, very, very slightly. And Taylor Blue is a lovely color for this. A lovely, rich blue sky color. So let's just blend a little bit of this in here, just as we go along the top. And pull it down slightly. Now I'm not going to be putting too much emphasis on the sky in this painting because mm -hmm. a, I, I want the focal point to be the castle. Okay, so I'm not putting too much emphasis on the sky. I just want a nice sky, but I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of work on the sky. Now, um, I'll just put some more white on my palette here because I flew through that bit of white. It's gone already. Um, now let me see. I'm going to bring a little bit of pink into this, okay? So I'm taking a touch of cadmium red. Um, find a clean place to mix. And some titanium white. And then I'm going to add a touch of Naples yellow. And this will make a lovely, lovely, um, kind of a soft pinky colour. I just want to go along the end with this. Now, bear in mind, if you've too much yellow, it's going to start turning a kind of a greenish colour. So what I'm going to do is just add more white to it and a bit more red. So I'm mixing in a bit more red now just at the end. There we go, that's more pink. And that will avoid the colours almost turning a kind of a green, a green hue just at the end. I want to keep it nice and clean. So again, I'm taking some white and some red and mix some nice warm colours in here. I want to warm the sky up. And I'm going to blend this up into that sky. And I'm actually going to lighten the blue hair now as well. I'm going to take some white, just white on its own. And this time was where I start putting thicker paint on, okay? I'm just putting white directly on my brush and onto that blue. That lightened the blue right up. There we go. And I suppose we want to do a little bit behind the castle as well. So picking up some of that colour on the palette. And let's just blend a little bit of that in behind the castle here as well. And smooth your brush strokes just across, left and right. So you can already see now, it's beginning to warm up the sky. And on the photograph, it's just kind of a very plain blue sky. And there's one cloud kind of floating across, but it's a little bit cold for me. I'm going to warm it up slightly. Um, now, I think maybe just at the end, a touch of Naples yellow, a touch of white. Just along the end there. There we go. And it's probably a bit yellow, so I'll just throw more white into it. There we go. And I'm just going to stick one or two clouds over across. And I'm going to make very, very warm clouds on the sky now, all right? Um, I'm just switching brushes. I'll move to a nice warm brush, okay? Very, very splayed out. Very cheap brush, okay? Very, very cheap brush. And um, that's exactly the kind of brush you want for clothes. Um, now, I'm going to, I'm going to change the direction of the light on the painting. On the castle, the light is coming from this side, isn't it? So I'm going to change it from this side because I want the sun to be setting because the sun sets on this side of the city okay it comes up on this side and it sets down on this side so i want the sun to be setting and casting a lovely warm color on the front of the um or on the left hand side of the castle here and a nice purpley shadow on the right hand side okay um so i'm going to bear that in mind now when i'm painting the clouds so for the clouds i'm going to put the light on the left hand side now let's mix up a nice cloud color for a nice kind of a sun going down type of a color and all I'm doing is I'm going to take some Naples yellow and I'm going to take some magenta, touch of magenta, okay, and I'll probably keep this more on the pinky side. So a touch more magenta and some white. 
and let's just check this here now and see see how it's looking um, i'm going to put a kind of a dash of clothes going across here so let me just check this now that's not a bad color is it nice color for a cloud so i'm just messing around with the brush here now putting it in all directions i'm going to clean my brush when, it's, when it starts getting dirty clean the brush and go back into some more magenta touch of naples yellow in fact look i'm going to put the palette here so you can see it now that's better isn't it there we go now magenta naples yellow and some white and let's put another cloud just here and the light is just ca catching the top left hand corner of these clouds okay the sunlight is catching that so i'm gonna put that there and I'm doing this now very, very, very dry. Very, very dry brushwork. There's probably zero turpentine now in my brush at the moment. Just so you know, guys. Um, let's take a touch more pink. Now, I'm making very, very small changes in these colours. Just tiny changes. You probably can't even see them on the camera, but I can see them here. Um, I'm staying away from the yellow as much as I can. Um, I'm making it almost more so magenta. I'm only put, putting a tiny touch of Naples yellow just to warm it up. So it's kind of an orangey, pinky orange I'm going for. Um, let's go across here. And I think we'll put one just behind the castle here, creeping out into the scene. Um, and let me have a look here now. I'm going to dip into some white and I'm going to put a little slither of white kind of clouds high up in the atmosphere. You know the kind I'm talking about. They're very high up and they're kind of scooting across the sky and they're going off into the distance. And that's not bad. Another one here. I'm just kind of wiggling the brush and giving it a little flick. There we are. Now, that's all I need to do for the lighter part. Um, I can come back now and put more highlights on these when I'm, when I'm finished the cloud. But now I'm going to put a nice little purpley shadow on the back of these. So I'm going to take some Taylor Blue. And we could even take some Magenta. And some Cadmium Red. And I'm just... I'm being very careful now with my colours here, okay? I don't want them to clash too much. So I'm probably going to keep this more on the blue side. All right, so more blue now than anything else in this. So let's just lighten this first with some white and let's let's just put some in here just to check it first, okay? Now it's probably a little, a little purple for me, so I might just add a touch of burnt umber and that will really dull it down a bit. There, now that's much better. So the burnt umber now really helps. Um, it kind of makes it much more natural, a more natural kind of a shadow colour. So let's just put this in, circle and motions, that's all I'm doing, round the circles. Just like this. And all the time I'm doing this now, I'm picturing a cloud in my, in my head, okay? I'm trying to picture what a cloud would look like. Now I do have clouds on a tablet here, um, but I'm just kind of making this up now as I go along myself. Um, Let's put a little bit of a shadow in behind this one. And let's just join those up. Now, I'm kind of generally just messing around with this now. Just kind of flicking around here and there. There we go. And a uh, little bit behind here. And down under this cloud then, a little bit of shadow. And I've used the same colour here now throughout. I haven't really changed this colour too much. And let's just pull that down into the light colour underneath. I'll do the same on this, little shadow underneath there. And then feather it off, nice and gently off into the distance. So you can even use your finger as well if you want, just to blend things in. Makes it nice and smooth. There we go. 
rub that off into the sky so you can do this whichever way suits yourself a lot of the time I'll use the blender brush for this but you don't really have to use the blender brush if you don't want to you can just use your hands as well and sometimes it's nice to get some paint on your hands every now and again as well I think there we go that's not a bad old sky is it and it only took what three minutes four minutes tops um, now you can strengthen some of the shadows if you like but to be honest I don't know if it needs stronger shadows I would be inclined to not making them any stronger I might just put one or two just along the bottom here off in the distance just straight across remember the further away something is the more horizontal it's going to get okay bear that in mind when you're painting clouds especially so because we're kind of high up in the sky here they can be big bulky clouds but as you get off in the distance they're very very small horizontal little clouds okay that's just something I wanted to tell you because it's difficult to kind of show people how to paint clouds especially when they haven't ever painted before I'm um, trying to explain as easy as possible for them to understand now I'm just going to soften some of this just a little just a tiny tiny bit just take the harshness out of some of these ed these edges here now there we go some lovely clouds and that didn't take long now did it now I'm, I'm going to go a step further with this with these clouds um, I'm going to put some nice highlights just along some of the bright edges here all right and in fact I might go in front of some of these shadows with that bright color as well just to show you to give you an idea about layers using different layers in the sky now I'm going to use the same color again some Naples yellow tiny bit of um, magenta and just mix up a tiny bit of that and look let's just go in front of this one again there we go you can see now how I did that just flicking it around and that's another cloud already in front so that now is pushing the other one behind isn't it and let's add a touch of Naples yellow to it because it's quite pinky and blend that down underneath so it's, it's, it's quite easy guys it really is now I'm going to switch to a pointy brush a small pointy brush okay and I'm going to get some nice detail in on these clouds I'm going to take some Naples yellow some white plenty of white and I'm going to go up here and put some nice highlights just on the outside edges of these now it's just here and there okay I'm not going crazy with this at all um, put one or two around here so you can see now I don't know if you can see it on the camera there now but there are any very subtle dif very subtle differences uh, but they really do kind of bring it to life I just really want to show the sun bouncing off of these clouds and now this is work that you can also do when you're finished the painting you can go back and add little bits here and there and sometimes that's what I would do as well um, but I just want to sh give you a good idea now about painting clouds here so you can see already um, it's really kind of coming to life and I'll put a little bit on the front of those shadows here and it's just a little bit here and there that's all now I want to just take some pure white and up on these just put a little wiggle here and there just some nice thick paint there you see because the light will be catching those as well even though even though they're so far up in the sky we'll still have a little bit of light catching and that's fine guys that's fine for now 
Okay guys, let's move on now and do the trees up here in the distance, okay? There's lots of trees up in the hill there and you can see the lovely sort of autumn colours, there's cyanides, there's yellows, there's a few greens in there. Um, so let's get that in now. So first of all, I'm going to take my, the brush I use for the clouds, okay? I'm just going to take that, give it a quick clean and my turps wash it and dry it. It's not very dry and I'm going to go into some burnt cyanide and let's take a bit of cadmium yellow now i don't want to keep this too browny because i want to complement the colors in the sky okay so i want to keep them kind of neutral enough so i'm going to take some burnt sienna some yellow and i think i might take a touch of lamp black all right now that will green it up a little bit but not too much and i just want to just put this in for a second and that's not too bad um, I might take a touch of Taylor Blue and that's really turning it a little green but that's fine, that's absolutely fine um, it's more of a base colour than anything else really anyway for now so I'm just going to go along and get the tops of these trees in with this and I'm going to be putting highlights on this now as well so I'm not too fussy about um, getting the shapes of the trees okay I'm not too fussy at all. I'm just going to take a touch of Naples yellow and that will lighten it somewhat. Um, let's see, it's around here. Now we have the three like big huge cylinders and they're probably holding tanks for something but they're off in the distance here. This is kind of a factory off in the distance. So they're going to be bright and I'm bearing that in mind so I'm going to keep it nice and dark in around these, okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit of black in with that colour there, just to make a really dark kind of a greeny, a dirty kind of a green colour. Alright, and let's just mix all this in together. And I'll show you what I'm going to do there now in a sec when I'm finished all this dark, dark colour. Um, I'm going to take a touch of burnt umber. I'll put a bit of burnt umber in. So as I'm going along now, I'm just changing colours. I'm adding colours to it as I'm going along. That's all I'm doing guys, it's really really simple. And I'm just keeping the outline of that building very very roughly. Don't be too particular about it. Uh, add a touch of red. Add a touch of red into it as well. Should you wish. Um, you can mess around with this as I said, add all different colours into this. That's what I like about the painting landscapes, you can have a bit of fun with it, you know. Um, there's no set of rules that you have to follow with landscape painting. You can just do it as you please. Now, there we go. Um, now it's kind of taking a dip down here slightly. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And um, also, I'm not going to go too dark on this side of the castle, okay? Because as I was saying earlier, I'm keeping the shadow on the right hand side. So, I want this shadow to stand out nice against a lighter colour in the background. Because if I make this really dark now, that shadow will not stand out very well. So, I'm kind of making a nice contrast here now. So, I'm just thinking ahead slightly. That's all I'm doing. Right, I'm going to take some magenta. Let's take a touch of magenta and a touch of burnt sienna. And perhaps a bit of white as well. And look, let's put a nice kind of a pinky colour in here. Pinky autumn colour. There we go. So, I'm just kind of messing around with the brush. Here. So we have, that's kind of our background in now, okay? Um, a basic background. And now I'm going to just move to my other green brush. This is a very, very worn green brush now, okay? This is the one that I've used from the very beginning. You can see that. This is just a kind of a newish one that I've used today. And this is the older one. You can see the difference. Now that's some difference, isn't it? So I'm just going to use this brush now, the older one. And I'm basically going to just dab in different directions. And that creates the nice kind of the shape of the trees. But at the, at the same time, blending this together. Okay. There we go. Let's 
So I'm basically just getting rid of all the old brush marks on the canvas. And I know there are some darks in there now as well. There's some very, very dark shades in there. So look, I'm going to put some dark shades in there as well. I'm going to take some Taylor Blue, some Magenta, and a touch of Cadmium Yellow. And let's see what that gives us. More Magenta. And perhaps a touch of Burnt Umber as well. So just a really, really dark colour. And let's just go along now and stick some dark colours in here and there. I'm just dabbing the brush here and there. It's no big deal. A little bit here. There we go. And um, make a nice purple. Some cadmium red, some tailor blue. And let's put some nice deep shades over here. There we go. And then of course, down behind these, nice and dark. Because I really want these to stand out over in the distance. There we go. Now. Right. Not looking too bad so far, is it? Um, now, I'm not going to paint any tree trunks in because they really are so far away. Honestly, they will not even be seen. So I'm just going to blend those back in there just very slightly. And you guys now probably have other ways of doing this. You can do it your own way, should you wish. Um, I'm just showing you how I would, how I would approach this. Go. and then I'm just going to back, go back to my smaller brush give it a quick clean and I'm going to mix some highlights down for the light side of these trees okay so the light is coming along is catching the tops of the trees just here and there so I'm going to take some burnt sienna I actually put my palette here for you I'm going to take some burnt sienna okay a little white and let's take a touch of magenta so I didn't even mix those colors now guys I just kind of very quickly went round on the palette very quickly hardly even mixing them okay plenty of thick paint and I'm just going to go along and I'm going to try and get the tops of the trees just here and there so let's see um one or two around here okay let's go up here and I'm kind of following the lie of the land now, so the land is kind of coming down this way. All right, it's kind of taking a curve down, so I'm following that curve and coming down at an angle. Okay, see there? Put another one here. Let's put a couple up on top, because the light will catch a lot of them up on top as well, won't it? Yeah, one or two just behind there. And already it's kind of coming to life, isn't it? Now, I've just went into some Naples yellow. So let's get some yellow tones in here as well. There we go. And again, I'm not going crazy with this. I'm just doing it here and there, all right? Because you can very quickly overpower the painting. Um, let's put one in here. And one there. And I'm kind of blending them then very gently into that dark colour underneath. Now, these are quite nice here, aren't they? Because of the very dark against the very light colour. There we go. And I would say that's probably all you'll need for the painting. I'll maybe just fix this area just slightly. There we go. And I reckon that's more than enough. Um, as I said, it's so far off in the distance that you're not going to see that much detail anyway, okay? There we go. Now, now I'm only fiddling, and you must stop when you start fiddling, okay? It's not good to fiddle. So there we go, distant trees now, guys. Um, I'm going to get in these little towers here, okay? And I can see we had three towers, and we're going to have a light side and a dark side. So let's just take some 
white and some of that lighter colour that was on the palette there was a bit of pink mixed in with this now as well but don't don't worry about that doesn't matter let's just fill these in okay and then keeping a slight curve on top now as well because there is a curve on these all right that's one and let's do another one there we go and remember now this is just a suggestion so don't um you don't have to go too crazy with detail on this they are very very far off and um i'm not going to go too crazy you can if you like but i'd rather keep these just as an impression and into that then i'm going to put some nice deep purple so some taylor blue some magenta and perhaps a touch of cadmium red just to warm it very slightly and i'm going to keep the shadow now on this side okay there we go and one there and another one there and let's just fade that into the light color just pulling it straight down and i could probably even go darker again so i'm going to add a touch of black into it just for the outside edge here there we go and again let's just try and blend that in very very gently there we go and that's them almost done now i'm just going to take my pointy brush take some burnt umber and along the top here i can see a dark line just cutting across there we go three dark lines and um, let's just suggest a little bit of detail on these so just a few little marks here and there it, it wouldn't be anything in particular but again they're not spotlessly clean either um, you see it just adds a bit of interest to the painting that's all that's literally all i want to do now we have little white ladders going across here as well as you can see in the picture um, little walkways so i'm just going to take a touch of white on my brush tiny tiny bit of white on my brush and let's just put a little white across now again it's just a suggestion it's just telling you that there's something there that's all i'm doing i'm not going to paint in each each individual little ladder and handrail and all that kind of thing that would just be silly I'm just creating a little bit of interest in the painting just to tell the viewer that there's all sorts of bits and pieces going on over here in the distance in the factory um, now we have the factory itself in here so let's paint this in and again I'm going to go into and take a bit of cadmium red for this and some light color some white and again I'm keeping this light here because it's on the right hand side and I know now guys it's difficult for you to follow what I'm painting by looking at the photograph because the shadows are actually I made a mistake the shadows are on the right hand side my apologies my sincere apologies I thought I thought the shadows were on the left hand side because I don't have the picture in front of me here I only just switched onto it there now and I realize the shadows are on the right hand side so a little bit of confusion there guys i do apologize i sincerely apologize but look it's okay we just crack on with it now nice dark color here now on this side there we go and let's add a touch of white into that and go up onto the roof So what I'm doing now with these, with most paintings that I, I paint, I always paint wet into wet and what that means for me is the colours pick up the wet colours that are around each other so everything kind of helps I suppose in a way. The colours kind of help each other out if that makes sense. 
So because all the colours are wet, they're all kind of mixing along with each other as it's going and um, they really help each other out as they're going along. The colours then kind of help each other, bounce off each other, um, creating, lovely, creating lovely shades and lovely hues. Now I'm just going to take some white and put a bit of white in here. And the light is catching that. And um, let me see. I'm take a bit of black and put some black in here. Let's just suggest a little outbuilding or something. Um, put some. Just suggest some windows, some telegraph poles, all that kind of stuff. So it's all just an impression. Yeah. And again. I go back to what I said earlier, it's just to create, create some general, just some interest into the painting so you can look and see that there's little things going on and now in the, in the photograph there are some trees in front of this, okay? I think I'll suggest one or two trees in front of that as well. So I'm just going to take some cadmium yellow and some white um, and perhaps a little burnt cyanide and let's just go up here and get some trees in just in front of these there we go that's all now you need to do basically I wouldn't I wouldn't go any further because you'll just start looking then for details and you'll spend a lot of time messing around on the canvas when you don't really need to be there we go now let's just sit another building off in the distance there we are kind of fading in amongst all the trees and I've been very kind of sketchy now with what I'm doing here very very sketchy okay so now I just want to grab my palette knife and just along the bottom of these I want to put a very bright kind of a highlight in there so I'm just taking a touch of cadmium yellow and some titanium white and I just want to put in Again, suggest the light catching a bit of grass or grassy verge, whatever it is, off in the distance. And again, not going crazy with it, all right? Just bear that in mind. Um, now, I did notice on the photograph just now that there is a house just on the left-hand side. So there's a house just up here peeking through the woods. So I'm going to put that in. Um, just for scale, I suppose, if anything else. Let's just suggest a little house up here. Peeking through. Um, let's just put a little couple of dark spots here and there. There we go. And uh, this is all just an impression, guys. It doesn't have to be exact all right now so that's not looking too bad is it i'm quite happy with that um i suppose we could move on to the water yeah let's get the water and get some nice reflections coming down especially from these now these will add lovely contrast now especially when the reflections go in so we're going to have a nice kind of a pale blue water going in with some nice reflections coming down make it lovely and soft nothing too fussy nothing too intricate just a nice soft reflection keep it simple because the focus is going to be on this castle here all right and i want to put a lot of the detail into the castle then so i think we will just leave it for now for this um i'm just kind of toing and froing here now will i do the water won't i do you know what we'll do the water We'll do the water and we'll call this part one. Okay? Black Rock Castle part one. So let's take our relatively new brush and let's mix up a light blue now for this. And do you know what I might do actually guys? I'll leave the palette here so you can see. Okay? Is that fair enough? Let's take some white. Let's take some Taylor blue. Now I'm using Taylor blue because it's a more it's a more kind of a natural blue I find um, I could use cobalt as well 
In fact, look, we put a bit of cobalt into it. There we go. And I want to keep this now really bright. So I'm going to put lots of white into this. Now, let's just cut across under here. And it's okay if it picks up some of that paint off in the distance. That's a good thing. Okay? That's a good thing. So let that paint get picked up. Just to the edge of the castle there. Very nice. Yeah, looking quite good. So I'm just making sure that the colours don't clash. Alright, I'm kind of I'm trying to keep them similar in um, in tone. So I'm just adding a touch of red into this now, a touch of pink, because there's a lot of pink in the sky going on up there. So it makes kind of, you know, it makes sense to have a bit of pink in the reflection as well, I think. So just a little, okay, not, not, I'm not overpowering it, just a little. So some more Taylor blue, some more white, touch of cadmium red. And let's put this in here. And of course, because it's getting closer to us, it's also getting a little stronger. There we are. And you can hear me dragging this now, it's quite dry. It's not overly wet, it's not very, very wet at all. I do hope you're enjoying these tutorials and I apologise if I'm speaking too quickly and if you can understand me very well I do apologize that's my cock accent coming out very very strong cock accent um, there we go no that's not too bad that's not too bad at all I think I might just darken it slightly let's take some more Taylor blue um, let's take some cadmium red and I might take some burnt umber so the same as what we did for the sky above okay guys I'm just going to darken this down a little and I'm going to blend it up then into that lighter colour above not too much there we go and of course with water it's always horizontal alright straight across don't be tempted to go on an angle or go this way it's always straight across but with, especially with water right once that's wet, I want to get into reflections, okay? So let's take our smaller brush that we had for the reflections. And we need to get this darker colour now down here as well, all right? So I'm going to mix up some of that colour, try and get some of that colour. So let's go for um, magenta, a touch of blue, and a touch of black. So I think that wasn't far off the colour that I used. Um, perhaps a touch of burnt umber again just to dull it down slightly and let's pull that straight down and then leave it going to the light okay so pull the dark straight down and then gently blend it off into the light so you can see what I just did do it again pull the dark down and gently blend it off into that lighter colour. So realistically you don't have to paint the light reflection. You can if you wish, but realistically that would suffice, that would be enough. But look, let's put a tiny bit of light colour in there as well. Um, particularly on this one, this is quite light here, isn't it? And that's a little, uh, a little yellow. I have a touch of cadmium red to that. go and let's put a bit in here and a bit here and then I want to suggest light from that building there so let's bring that down a little bit of white a little bit of cadmium red there we go and then let's suggest that darker color so let's take some of the dark that we had on our palette it's not any particular colour, it's just some dark paint we had. There we are. 
and a tiny bit of white into that mix for the roof. And this is very, very loose now, it's just an impression. Okay, I'm just very, very, very loose. And what I might do, guys, is with the tree brush that we use for our tree, just suggest some colours from that hill as well. Okay. So a little bit of burnt sand, a bit of burnt umber. Now bear in mind they will be darker, okay? The reflections will be darker in the water. So let's just pull a bit down. That's a little bit light, isn't it? So let's take some black and some burnt sand now. And just pull a little bit of that down just here and there. Okay. Again, I'm only suggesting it and I know I keep saying this but I'm only suggesting the reflections um, I don't want to paint a mirror image of what's there but at the same time I do want it to be believable if that makes sense there we go and then we have some burnt hyena with some Naples yellow kind of off over here gets kind of lighter doesn't it and then what I'm going to do guys is just pull all this down then with my um, blender brush so I have my blender brush here okay I'm just going to pull that down and try and blend this together There we go, so it's becoming softer and softer, you can see. And I'm lightly over the building. That's it. That's some nice reflections. Then after that, I'm just going to cut across very gently. Very, very lightly. Just left to right. And I'm doing all this now while the canvas is nice and wet, okay? And then take a palette knife. So this now, guys, is generally how I would paint a reflection on a painting, okay? Um, take some titanium white, let me show you. Pull some titanium white off with your palette knife, okay? And just go along over here where it meets the land. And just here and there, I'm dipping my knife down so that the paint catches the canvas. So let me do it again just here and then lift and dip so it's just hit and miss as you go along. Now I'm going to put some ripples in the water as well. So let's just drag some ripples horizontally across and that just, that just helps basically to break up the reflection. There we go. And that's probably, I think, I apologise, knife fell on the ground. That's probably enough, I think. Let's not over, overdo it, okay? And that, guys, will do for a reflection. Now, we will have some reflections or some, some water kind of lapping in here as well. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that white again and I'm just going to put a little bit of water just coming, coming in here and lapping up on the sand, all right? Just while it's wet. Now I'll be coming back to this again later, doing this, but just as I'm here now, I just want to do a little bit of this. There we go. Now, and let me take this audio away and let's have a look. That's not a bad reflection now, is it? It's, uh, it's nice and simple. Nice, nice simple reflection. Um, so guys, I think we will call this part one finished, yes? So join me in part two, we will um, work on the castle, try and get most of this castle done 
uh, try and get some of the foreground done here as well. Um, and who knows, we might even finish the painting. So uh, don't go anywhere guys, I will see you in part two. Thanks and God bless.